Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. So, this week, we are heading to Standard to play a deck I'm super excited about. This is Deep Bant, or Bant, built around Elder Deep Fiend, and in some ways, it is reminiscent of some of the old Bant decks we saw when Collected Company is in the format. We play a lot of good Bant cards, we have some powerful Planeswalkers, we got tons of removal, and one of the reasons I really like this deck, I think it's a good deck in general, but it also gets a ton of cards, which are very good against Aetherworks Marvel, so I feel like this is a deck that has a very good matchup against Marvel decks, plus enough good value cards that it can keep up with some of the other decks in the format as well. So, as you can see, 98 bucks in the paper world, 43 ticks on Magic Online. A quick reminder, before we break down Deep Bant for Standard, if you haven't already, take a second, click that subscribe button down below. We're closing in on 100,000 subscribers, which is super awesome. You can help us get there. Anyway, let's talk Deep Ant in Standard. So, Deep Ant, as I mentioned, is named after Elder Deep Fiend, which is one of the kind of unique cards in the deck. In some ways, this feels a little bit like the Teamer Energy decks that are fairly popular. We play a lot of the same green and blue cards, because that's where a lot of the good cards are. Rogue Refiner, Servant of the Conduit, but we have some things that really separates the deck, not only by going into white mana, instead of red mana to be banned, but also Elder Deep Fiend. So Elder Deep Fiend is just such a good card. We have plenty of ways to be able to emerge it out on turn four, and on turn four, Elder Deep Fiend is basically a time walk. We can tap down all our opponent's lands, we get this huge body, we can potentially chain them together to do this multiple times, and then in the late game, we can use Elder Deep Fiend to tap down our opponent's blockers and get in a lethal attack with all of our creatures. So Elder Deep Fiend, super essential and just a super strong card when it's supported well. As far as emerging our Elder Deep Fiend, our main plan here is several three drops. We have four Rogue Refiners, which is just one of the best cards in Standard. It's so much value. Its body is roughly on curve as a 3-2 three, for three. It makes some energy, which isn't super important to our deck, but we do use it a little bit. And it's a great body for emerging because we get to draw that card, which means when we sack it to Elder Deep Fiend, we're not really too upset. We're not losing any card advantage there. Eldrazi Sky Spawner is kind of the same way. We get the token left behind, which we can use to make some extra mana or to chunk block, and then we can sacrifice it, get our Elder Deep Fiend, on turn 4, tap our opponent out, all that stuff we're just talking about. So they're mainly in the deck because they're good value, they're just a powerful creatures on their own, plus they synergize super well with Elder Deep Fiend. So the reason to be white in this deck, rather than the more common Teamer Energy deck, is number one, Spell Queller, which is just such a great card in a metagame full of Aetherworks Marvel. I mean, it's such a great card, period, but it's even greater than normal when a lot of people are playing Marvel, because it gets rid of Marvel, there's a ton of threats that it answers in the format. Pretty much anything in Zombies, pretty much anything from the random value decks. It gets Chandra's, other Planeswalkers, it gets Gideon's, it gets Heart of Kieran's. There's so many things that Spell Queller matches up really well with. The only time it's really bad is in the hardcore control decks where they just kill it and it doesn't do that much, but even then, it's a not horrible flyer with Flash as a 2-3 three for 3, but it's just super good at disrupting our opponent, and it works well with our other main white card in Tamiyo Field researcher. So Tamiyo is one of the more underrated planeswalkers in standard, I think. The abilities are so good, and we definitely have games where Tamiyo just takes over. It just draws us so many cards, generates so much card advantage, and can kind of do this weird Elder Deep Fiend imitation, where we can tap down a couple blockers, get in a bunch of damage, they don't untap, get in another big hit of damage to close out the game that way. But most of the time, we're plussing, targeting a Spell Queller, maybe an Eldrazi Sky Spawner, drawing a couple cards, getting more action, finding our Deep Fiends, finding more answers. So it's just a really good way to take over the game. The reason Tamiyo doesn't see more play is Bant isn't that popular of a color combination at the moment, and you do have to be in Bant to play Tamiyo, but it's just very strong in a deck that can cast it, and in our deck, we're built to cast it. The rest of the deck, Servant of the Conduit in tune with Aether, 
basically to help fix our mana. As I mentioned before, we don't have any major energy payoffs. We're not really an energy deck, but a tune makes sure we have enough energy to keep using Servant and so forth, and it makes sure that we can always cast our stuff on time, both of these cards. And then we have some counter spells. So three negates, very good against Marvels, very good against control decks, and even fine against other decks. It gets a heart of cure and or a Gideon against Vehicles decks. It gets a Liliana's Mastery or Dark Salvation against Zombies, so even in the matchups where it's not as good, it's still pretty good. And then Sensor, just super low opportunity cost, because if it's not good, we can always just cycle it away for one mana. And then we have a bunch of removal, so Cast Out is just the best non-conditional removal spell we have. It's the closest thing we have to like a hero's downfall in standard. It comes down to instant speed, gets planeswalkers, stops Marvel after just one spin, gets an Ulama, gets anything we got to get rid of. Gideons and Chandras and so forth. Ether Meltdown is a little bit of a hedge against Heart of Kirin, but it's fine on most creatures, just making it so they can't really beat us down. Confiscation Coup, Eh, another one of gives us an energy payoff. It felt a little bit weird to play so many energy producing cards and nothing that really takes advantage of the energy. So as a one of, and with all the energy we can produce, we can usually steal something super big with Confiscation Coup. And then Dissenter's Deliverance is kind of like Sensor in the sense that it's not always great, but that's fine because we can always cycle it away. So it's very good against vehicle decks, also very good against Marvel decks, and then in the other matchups, like Zombies or Control decks, we just cycle it away and find another card. As far as the mana base, pretty straightforward. We got the four Aether Hubs, which are super important, a bunch of dual lands, and then a bunch of basic lands, and one Sanctum of Ugin. Uh, because we're three colors, it's kind of hard to play more than one Sanctum of Ugin, but Sanctum is super good, because we can Elder Deep Fiend, sack the Sanctum, get another Elder Deep Fiend to time walk our opponent again the next turn, so maybe there's a way to go up to two of them, but it is pretty challenging with the fact that we have such intensive mana costs. For example, Tamiyo, we need three different colors of mana on turn four, so if we have multiple Sanctum of Ugins or other colorless lands, we're going to have to play our Tamiyo off curve, which isn't really where we want to be. As far as the sideboard, we get a bunch of rats, so these can come in over like the negate and so forth in zombie matchups, in green-black type matchups where we can sweep away Ishkanas and Grim Flayers and Crypt Breakers and a whole board full of creatures. Emulating Glare also comes in for those aggressive decks, a way to kill a Grim Flayer on turn two. Ether Meltdown, just more removal that's especially good in vehicles matchups, but is fine in general. And then some more customization for our counters. So Essence Scatter, again, can come in over negates or sensors if we're playing zombies or creature-heavy decks where negates okay, but not as good as it could be. Then Negate, Dispel, Ceremonious Rejection is mostly for control matchups, for Aetherworks Marvel matchups with Ceremonious Rejection. And there's also fringe things. There's a lot of powerful colorless spells running around, so sometimes you run into, like, Colossus decks, Metalwork Colossus decks, or Paradoxical Outcome, Aetherflux Reservoir type decks, and Rejection is super good there as well. And then another Dissenter's Deliverance, kind of like Ceremonious Rejection, when you run into those weird matchups, or when you're up against Vehicles type stacks, it's very good to be able to bring in one more of them and have the full four, especially since you can cycle them away. And then Lifecrafter's Bestiary is for more grindy matchups. The scry every turn is super good, and drawing a card when you cast a creature just kind of puts the game out of reach a lot of times. If we're playing this grindy board gummed up type matchup against like a Delirium deck or something like that, and Aether Sphere Harvester is kind of dual purpose. It comes in to fly over decks like zombies, gains us some life, gives us an aggressive threat to get in in the air, and that is Deep Bant for Standard, and that's our budget magic deck for this week, so I'm pretty excited about this deck. Being able to have a deck that is fun to play, number one, that's kind of like the qualification of any budget magic deck. It's got to be at least somewhat fun to play, and this one's pretty fun. We get a lot of value, we get a lot of interaction, we get to do a lot of cool things, we draw some cards with Tamiya so it feels like we always have stuff to do. And then we have a lot of decisions with our removal, with our counters. So it's a fun deck to play with lots of interactions, lots of decisions. More importantly, well, not more importantly, but also important, it's good against Team or Marvel, which is something I really wanted to have this week because Team or Marvel is just such a big deal in Standard. So this deck, we just, if you look at the deck, we have so many cards that are specifically good in that matchup. Spell Queller, great in that matchup. Negate, great in that matchup. Descenders 
Deliverance, great in that matchup. Cast Out, very good in that matchup. And sneakily, Elder Deep Fiend is actually pretty good, especially on the play, because we can tap our opponent out on turn four, and they're not able to cast their Marvel. So we just have a ton of cards that are very good there that are also good in other matchups. Like Elder Deep Fiend, Spell Queller are good in other matchups as well. And the cards that are a little more hit or miss, like Dissenter's Deliverance, at least we can cycle away when we don't need them. So I feel like this one's pretty sweet. I feel like it's pretty competitive and could be even more competitive with a couple of upgrades. Mana Beast, maybe a little bit better. Maybe some Gideon somewhere in the 75. But I think it's pretty powerful. It's pretty fun. And it beats up on Marvel. So anyway, that's Deep Bat for Standard. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay videos. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you haven't already, take a minute and click that subscribe button. It's a great way to support the channel for free, and you'll find the next video in the playlist right here.